In this lesson, we're going to learn more about equivalent fractions. Here's some vocabulary for equivalent fractions. As you see here, we see vocabulary. Equivalent fractions are fractions that name the same amount. So we have this fraction here. Sure, there's four parts. Two of them are shaded. Two is our numerator here for our fraction. And four is the denominator. I'm going to label those parts for you. Two-fourths, while I'm labeling these, I'll talk about this here. Two-fourths is equivalent to four-eighths. Two-fourths is equivalent to four-eighths. And then so, both of those models and both of those fractions are naming that same amount. In order to create equivalent fractions, read the bullet points with me. Read that first one. Multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. So whatever we do in the numerator, we have to do in the denominator as well. Or, to create equivalent fractions, you can also divide the numerator and denominator by that same number. Here's a note. It says it has to be a common factor to work with division. And what that means is that you can't do something like this. You can't do. You wanted 5 eighths. Sure, one of the factors of 8 is 2, but 5 is not divisible by 2 because it does not have a common factor. 5 eighths is actually in simplest form. So you can't do that. But... So if you have larger numbers, you can make equivalent fractions by using division. You divide by a common factor. In this example, we can divide both numbers by 7. So 28 30 fifths is equivalent to 4 fifths. Here's another example. If we had 36 48ths, let's list out those factors of 36. And let's look for that common factor. We know one of the common factors would be 2 for sure because both of those are even numbers. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, let's see, 9, 12, 36 as factors of 36. We got a lot of factors for 48. 1, 2, 4, 6. 6 goes with 8. 4 goes with 12. 2 goes with 24. And 1 goes with 48. Now the greatest common factor, 1, 2, 3, 4. So they both have 4, so they're common. 9, 12. Up. Oh, they're both divisible by 12. They're both divisible by 12. So if we do that there, we divide by 12, and we divide by 12, we're going to get our answer. We're going to get our simplest form. 36 divided by 12 is 3. 48 divided by 12 is 4. So that's 3 fourths, and that's what's called in simplest form. Now if we had taken that there, make a new slide for you. If we had taken 36 48s and we had simplified by just saying, oh, they're both even, and divided by 2 in the numerator and denominator, remember you have to do the same thing in both, we would have gotten 18 24 Sure, it's an equivalent fraction for 36 48s, but it's still not in simplest form. In other words, there's something that we can still divide both the numerator and denominator by. In this case, if we divide by 2 again, we get 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. We'd have 9 twelfths. I'm going to write that down here so I have more room to work. 9 twelfths still is not in simplest form. It's not in simplest form because both 9 and 12 are divisible by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. A number is divisible by another number if it can be divided evenly without a remainder. 9 divided by 3 is 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. 3 fourths is the simplest form for 36 48 Wouldn't it have been just that much easier to just divide by 12 in the first place? Although listing out those factors wasn't exactly easy either. I had mentioned fractions in simplest form before. Now, if we look at this definition, you might want to pause the video and copy down this definition for yourself. Simplest form of a fraction. Fractions are in simplest form when the numerator and denominator do not have any common factors besides 1. So examples of fractions that are in simplest form, 4 fifths, 2 elevenths, 3 eighths, all of those fractions are in simplest form. 
The only factors of 3, and I'm going to need to choose another color so that you can see it, are 1 and 3. Factors of 8, 1, 2, 4, and 8. And so there's no common factor besides 1. And then so even if we divide it by 1 on both of those there, it's not going to do anything. 3 divided by 1 is 3. 8 divided by 1 is 8. Oh, we still have 3 eighths. And that's why that fraction there is in simplest form. I know a lot of students, what they want to do is they want to go like this. They want to go divided by 2, divided by 2, and then put a 1 here. And then they end up putting something like 5 here or something else over there. 11 is really not divisible by 2, though. And then so do not make that mistake. Once you get to 2 11ths, stop, because it already at that point is in simplest form. The only common factor that those two numbers have is 1. That's why it's in simplest form. Here's that method of writing fractions in simplest form where you find that greatest common factor, the numerator and denominator, and then you divide both numbers by that GCF or greatest common factor. And then so what that means again is this. If I had the fraction 20 thirtieths, I list out the factors of 20 as 1, 2, 4, 5, and 10. Oops. That's why. Oops. I'll just list that. 20, 10. Okay, typically you list your order, your factors in order. Couldn't hit undo there for some reason. 1, 2, 3. Um, 30 is not divisible by 4, so it's not a factor. It's 5. And then 6. 5 goes with 6. 3 goes with 10, 2 goes with 15, and we have 30. Now, the greatest common factor, see, 30, oops, nope, 15, up, oh, 10. 10 is the greatest common factor. I did have that out of order. There's no 20 over here, though. So, it says to divide both numbers by the GCF for greatest common factor. And so I have divided by 10, divided by 10. 20 divided by 10 is 2. 30 divided by 10 is 3. And then so 20 tenths in simplest form is 2 thirds. Again, this was the greatest common factor of 20 and 30. Here's an example for you, all nicely written out. As you see here, they found the factors of 20 and 28. They use those multiplication facts, what it is that we can multiply together, and like I was saying, you list factors in order. So common factors of 20 and 28, those numbers that appear on both of those lists, were 1, 2, and 4. That's why they listed them out here. Common factors as 1, 2, and 4. The biggest number there, or the greatest common factor, of 20 and 28 is 4, and that's why they divide it by 4. They divide by the same thing in the numerator and the same thing in the denominator. 20 divided by 4 is 5 and 28 divided by 4 is 7, so 5 sevenths at this point is in simplest form. You do always want to look at the answer as to what it is that you feel is in simplest form and really look at it to make sure that there's no other things that we can divide both the numerator and denominator by. Alright, it's time for you to try. Go ahead and copy these down, hit pause, and then we'll continue. Do show your work as to how it is that you are coming to that simplest form. And what we're doing is we're choosing those greatest common factors. Fourteen and twenty-eight. They're both divisible by seven, but if I didn't see that right away, and I didn't choose a greatest common factor, I might have said, oh, I think it's two, if I didn't list them all out. I would have ended up with seven fourteenths. And then I notice, oh, 7. I can divide both by 7. And then so I end up getting 1 half. So I actually could have divided by 14, is what that greatest common factor of 14 28ths is. 10 thirtieths. Did you divide by 10 in the numerator and 10 in the denominator? As long as you came to the simplest form of 1 third, that's fine. You might have taken one step there. 
you might have gone divided by 2, divided by 2 to get 5 fifteenths, but you would have had to recognize that 5 fifteenths is not in simplest form. You had to divide by 5 and divide by 5 again to get 1 third. So those are your answers there. Those are those answers that are in simplest form. Those are in simplest form. One half, one third, four fifths, and one third.